A couple weeks ago, we made a video over great JRPGs to play during the summer. In that video, naturally, a lot of games with tropical and beach settings were included. It got me thinking, man, beaches and JRPGs are just so chill and atmospheric. Why not make a video about them? Between uh, top 10 beach towns and JRPGs and just a basic overview on beaches in general, we let you guys decide and here we are. With that said, we'll also be making a general video over beaches sometime within the next couple weeks as well. So yeah, without further ado, let's just dive into the video and count down our top 10 tropical slash beach towns and JRPGs. To start this list off, coming in at number 10, we have Lepadia Village from Rogue Galaxy. Or Lepadia Village. Honestly, I forget how it's pronounced. I had been playing a lot of Rogue Galaxy recently in preparation for the retrospective we released on it last week, and in my time doing so, I came across the optional beach planet, Alistia, which I never went to as a kid. On the planet, there's a little coastal village, and this place is pretty damn chill. The colors are so lush and vibrant, and the music is super relaxing as well. It just nails that tropical beach atmosphere pretty perfectly. The fact that this village, an entire planet for that matter, isn't required by the main story is kind of a shame actually, as it means not every player is gonna get to see it. But also, I guess it's their fault for not choosing to go there, so whatever. Fun little fact that I forgot to mention in our Rogue Galaxy video last week. Not only is this planet and village optional to see, but it was also only included in the American and European versions initially, not the original Japanese version. Japan did later get this extra content through a director's cut though. Coming in at number 9, we have Yoshi's Village from Paper Mario. Yoshi's Village is a village made up entirely of Yoshis, obviously, and can be found amidst the tropical jungles of Lava Lava Island. Well, mainly Yoshis at least, as there are a few other characters there, like the homie Sushi, who ends up joining your party, and is also sort of an odd choice for a name considering it represents the killed version of them, but whatever. The village just seems really peaceful though, and takes place in one of my favorite segments of the game, so it sticks out to me in that regard. There are some other memorable characters here as well, like the fat Yoshi Chief and Raphael the Raven. Yoshis in general are just so cool, so it's pretty hard not to like this place. Coming in at number 8, we have Summers from Earthbound. Some of you may hate me for this, as I know many of you may have had this a lot higher, but I gotta confess, I didn't play Earthbound as a kid, so I don't have the same nostalgia for it as a lot of you do, unfortunately. The only time I've ever played through Earthbound actually, don't ask how or why, but I didn't play it with sound at all, so a lot of its magic was sort of missed I feel. It's one I really need to go back to soon and give it the full attention that it deserves. Anyway, Summers itself is a really chill place though. It's basically just a giant beach and a strip of shops, which is pretty realistic to what areas around beaches are normally like actually. There's stores with overpriced goods, a posh luxury resort, a seafood restaurant, and yeah, pretty accurate stuff. The beach is a really lively setting and even has some super rare enemies that you can encounter there. The music here is also quite iconic and one of the more memorable tracks in the game. And yes, I did go back and listen to the OST. Overall, the American beach atmosphere is just executed so perfectly in summers and I can easily see why it's a favorite of so many. Coming in at number 7, we have Gumbo Village from Grandia. I like Gumbo Village for a lot of the plot stuff that happens around here. Your party comes here seeking a boat to take them to a place with a less than desirable name these days, but not too long after getting there, Justin and Fina find themselves known as the brave couple all throughout the village. Shit's all fine and dandy at first, until they realize that brave couple is just a synonym for couple that is to be offered as a sacrifice to the dragon on top of the nearby volcano. Every year, two lovers are offered as sacrifices in order to appease a dragon, meaning that not too many people want to admit their feelings for each other there. Big surprise. Before even getting a chance for rebuttal, they get catapulted over to the volcano. I like how after slaying the dragon and restoring warmth to the village, you get thrown a celebration and the chief is all happy and nice to you and it's just like, bro, you just tried to kill me and catapulted me like a Looney Tunes character. Fuck you. Anyway, the most memorable part about Gumbo Village is the romantic scene between Justin and Fina that takes place on the beaches. 
The music is so beautiful here, and aesthetically, the scene just nails that feel of a romantic, starlit night between two lovers. It's a really cute scene, not gonna lie. For all you hopeless romantics out there, you'll really enjoy this one. Coming in at number 6, we have Costa del Sol from Final Fantasy VII. This is another really popular one that would probably top a lot of people's list. In a game that has a lot of darker locations, arriving at this bright and vivid beachside town is a very nice and welcome contrast. The music is so relaxing and exactly what you would expect from a place like this. It's such a chill little place that even when your party gets there, everyone is just like, yo, I need a little R&R &R time to myself. I'll catch you guys later. I like how you can go bother Bear in the bathroom and kick Red 13 with a soccer ball for no reason other than to just be a dick. You can even find Hojo's old pasty ass trying to get a tan on the beach with some bikini chicks. Why your party doesn't just roast that dude right then and there is beyond me, but hey, I guess in vacation spots like this the gloves are off. Or sword is down, whatever. Plot significance wise, not a lot happens here which is why this one isn't higher on the list, but in a game as serious as Final Fantasy VII, sometimes all you just need is a relaxing setting to take a break and kick your feet up. You've earned it. Coming in at number 5, we have Altamira from Tales of Symphonia. The towns in Tales of Symphonia are all so cozy, and Altamira is no exception. It captures that beachside resort ambiance quite well. There's a chill little beach and bar, a giant hotel, there's even an amusement park, and yes, you can ride the rides. There's also various side quests you can do here, with one of them even giving your characters their swimsuit costume. In addition to the amusement park, you can also ride the Elemental Railway to the Lazarino Company. To go into much more detail on what that place is would start going into spoiler territory a bit though, so just play it yourself. With uh, cheery music and bright atmosphere, you just can't help but be in a good mood when you visit this place. It's definitely one spot I wouldn't mind taking a vacation at myself. Coming in at number 4, we have Castaway Cove from Nino Kuni. One of my favorite things about Nino Kuni is the charm of its world and town design, and Castaway Cove is a great example of that. To further immerse yourself into the setting, the game forces the player to switch into swimsuits whenever visiting this place. There's an actual plot reason behind it as well, as it's a law put in place by the leader of Castaway Cove. Apparently, it was done as a sign for peace, as he didn't want anyone to be able to conceal weapons in their clothes. Well, that's one interesting reason, I gotta give him that. Outside of the awesome ambiance, some pretty memorable stuff relating to the story takes place here as well. There's a couple boss battles, one of them being the genie guarding the cauldron that allows you to craft stuff upon beating him. You also join up with your third party member here, Swain, although you don't really meet him under the best circumstances. It's all good though, they do warm up to each other after a while. Overall, Nino Kuni just does atmosphere so damn well, so it's no surprise that its rendition of a tropical seaside town would be one of my favorites. Coming in at number 3, we have Lana Lulu from Dragon Quest XI. Jeez, I wonder what real life location this was inspired from. Like all the other towns in Dragon Quest XI, Lana Lulu is based on an actual place in the world, this one obviously being Hawaii. The setting here is so gorgeous, it just makes me want to live here. What's not to love about it? There's warm weather, beautiful scenery, fresh fish everywhere to eat until your heart's content, and yeah, this place just looks like such a comfy place to live. Plot-wise, there's a pretty engaging story here about the forbidden romance between a mermaid and a fisherman, but I won't spoil that ending for you guys. As a whole, the graphics in Dragon Quest XI are just so fucking fantastic. They're about as immersive as it gets, and the essence of Hawaii is brought to life perfectly here. It was easily one of my favorite locations in the entire game. So damn peaceful. Coming in at the number 2 spot, we have Arnie Village from Chrono Cross. Not only is Arnie Village one of my favorite beach towns in JRPGs, but it's one of my favorite JRPG towns, period. If you've watched a lot of our older videos, this probably comes as no surprise to you. I mean, the intro to our prologues and JRPGs video was centered around this town even. I fucking love this place. The pre-rendered backgrounds are absolutely gorgeous, and the music is so damn relaxing. It's one cozy ass village that I definitely wouldn't mind living in. I can imagine it now. You wake up, meet up with your friends at the dock, 
take a scenic hike through Lizard Rock, then spend a fun afternoon chilling away on Opasa Beach. Maybe get caught up in an interdimensional time rift transporting you to an alternate dimension. I don't know, we'll see if we have enough time. All in all, the tropical aesthetic to Chrono Cross is one of my all-time favorites out of any video game ever, and Arnie Village is the perfect introduction to this setting. It's definitely one location that will always stick with me. Before we get to the top spots, here's a few quick honorable mentions. Castaway Village in East Aid isn't exactly a town as it's basically just comprised of you and your party, but it's still a really chill and serene place. I love just running around here. Land Gout from Thousand Arms is a pretty cool seaside, beachside town. Plus you meet one of your party members here, Wyna, who also happens to be best girl in the game. The last honorable mention goes to all the beachside towns in the various Pokemon games. There's so many of them, so I couldn't just narrow it down to one. Here you guys go though. All right, coming in at the number one spot, probably to no one's surprise, we have the Sade Village from Final Fantasy X. Final Fantasy X is a game with a huge tropical setting, and Bisaid Village, and really just the whole island in general, is one of the prettiest examples of it in the entire game. The environments are so bright and vibrant, and the music is absolutely incredible. It's easily one of my favorite pieces on the OST. While strolling through here, you just feel so at peace with nature and don't have a care in the world. The ambiance is truly something special and quite breathtaking. While the game doesn't technically begin here, the journey essentially does as it's where you meet up with most of your party, including Waka, Yuna, Lulu, and Kamari. The only one that's missing here is Riku. Plus the pilgrimage actually does begin here, which is basically just a giant journey to defeat Sin. You get the Aeon Veil 4 from the Cloister of Trials here to help you on your journey as well, and in my opinion, he's one of the cooler designed Aeons in the whole game. In a title as iconic as Final Fantasy X, Bisade Village and Island is an absolute landmark in the series and one of the most memorable locations in video games ever. And that's why it tops our list as the number one tropical slash beach town in JRPGs. And that about wraps up this video. Thanks for watching everyone, we hope you enjoyed it. If you did, it would mean a lot if you could either hit that like button or even consider subscribing. We put out new JRPG content every week. What are some of your favorite beach towns in JRPGs though? Let us know with a comment below. I'm assuming locations like Bisade Village, Costa del Sol, and Summers will be pretty popular, but I'm curious to hear other opinions. As always, huge thank you to our Patreon supporters. Your generosity is very much appreciated. Other than that, hope you have an awesome day everyone. This is Gaming Productions. Until next time.